Hey there, everyone. It's Denise Salcedo. Welcome back to the channel. I'm very excited to introduce to you my guest for today. We had a very lengthy and deep conversation. Please welcome my guest, the bad boy, Joey Janella. What's up, Joey? Hey, hey what's up? Thanks for having me. Uh, I, liked, I like stirring. I like stirring the pot. <laughs> you There's definitely pot buzz. You definitely has buzz. been. You've been yes. stirring that pot for sure. And like... Okay, so I know we got like so much to talk about. So I was trying to like figure out like, okay, where am I going to kick things off with Joey and kind of go from there. But first of all, I want to thank you for even just taking the time to do this interview with me because I feel like I, you know, I've been wanting to talk to you for the longest time, but it hadn't like lined up just yet. So when we finally got around to doing this, I was like, hell yeah, perfect timing because there's so much to talk about. So Let's kick things off with with the world on GCW, the Hammerstein Ballroom Show. GCW has been growing uh, tremendously, and they've been, you know, running a lot of shows. They've been doing so much, but I kind of want to start things off there and ask you what your experience was like working the Hammerstein Ballroom. It was, it was surreal. It was awesome. Um, like when I knew Brett wanted to run the Hammerstein Ballroom for a while. Um, but money wise, it had to make sense. Uh, that's a very expensive, um, building to, uh, invest and run a show in. So I knew he wanted to do it. And when he told me he was going to do it, I believed that we were going to sell it out. Uh, we had the momentum, uh, to sell out that building and, uh, it was just surreal that whole weekend uh, from the independent hall of fame, which was just absolutely flawless the night before and very cool um, to the show the next day and just getting in that building and seeing all the, the, the bright faces on some of the younger wrestlers getting a chance to work Hammerstein ballroom. And, you know, it was definitely a, a bucket list thing for me. And, uh, you know, my, I got to wrestle, the, possibly the biggest heel in the history of the GCW as the ultimate baby face. Um, and it was just awesome. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, we, the time constraints with the pay-per-view, if I, we can go back and say, Hey, uh, should it, should have we run an actual pay-per-view with a three hour time constraint? I'd say yes, because it's, a learning experience for uh, GCW and, you know, we're going to get there again, for sure. We're going to get to go to the Hammerstein ballroom again, for sure. And we're going to get on pay-per-view again, for sure. But now we learn from our mistakes and next time we do it, you know, we're going to knock it out of the park. And uh, it's just, it's always been like that when it's come to people running pay-per-views for the first time, whether it be ECW, Barry Legal going off the air 30 seconds before the time constraint or all in, which, you know, people went over their time, me included, unfortunately, uh, because I've never been to that platform before and uh, causing the main event to be cut short. And, uh, you know, it's a learning experience and, uh, you know, I wouldn't change a thing, you know, so uh, I loved it. It was experience and uh, can't wait to do it again. I thought it was a really fun show. I thought it offered something different for everybody. Like whatever type of wrestling yeah. fan that you are, you went into the show and I think everybody kind of had like something like something different that ended up being their favorite of the night. But I do want to talk a little bit about what you and Matt Cardona did because Matt Cardona has seriously reinvented himself and everything that he has been doing in GCW has really just uh, hit this like new plateau where it's been so good, but so much happened uh, in your match with Matt Cardona. Cardona, I kind of want to ask you about how you guys, you know, thought about all of these different uh, facets that were included. You know, we saw uh, Sean Waltman, we saw Hornswoggle, we saw Brian Myers. I mean, there was just a lot going on. Uh, yeah, I just, at first, I really didn't want to go that route. Uh, but Brett had other plans for the match. And once I was set on those plans, I said, listen, let's make this as ridiculous as possible. Uh, it was kind of a love letter to uh, the booking, the wacky booking of ECW and with the run-ins and uh, 
and the surprises and the chaos. And, you know, the match wasn't for everyone. It's probably the most polarizing wrestling match of my entire career. Some people absolutely loved it. Some people thought it was a disgrace to the business. I know Meltzer probably, I think he gave it one and a half stars. If I Maybe even just a one. Um, but, you know, it wasn't for everyone. But if you were there in that building during that match, you had a good time. And, uh, you know, that's all, that's all I can ask for. The reactions were great. Every, every reaction during that match that we've planned out went accordingly and, 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 and got the reaction it deserved. So, you know, I wouldn't go back and change that either. Uh, and, uh, you know, we had a great time and, uh, it was great being on that stage and, uh, having a match like that fun match, uh, that people will remember whether you liked it, loved it, or you fucking hated it. It was an experience and, uh, you're going to remember it. Do you care about that stuff when it comes to people? Cause I know throughout your career, you've gotten people that are like, yeah, we love you for doing all this crazy stuff. And then you got other people who are like, that's trash, this and that. And so you get like two sides of things. How does that, now that you've been dealing with it for a long time, is it something that still, you know, it, it affects you? Cause at the end of the day, it's still your work. Um, I've never really, I've never really been affected by it. Uh, I always love the, people talking about me, whether it be negative or positive. So when you see me go at a fan on social media, uh, most wrestlers wouldn't do that um, because it will not only poke the beehive, but looks kind of strange for a professional wrestler to be going at it with some fan with a picture of an anime character and three followers uh, (laughs) on Twitter. But it, it riles up the, it, I like poking the beehive. Uh, at first, when I first started doing uh, AEW television, you know, a lot of people didn't know who I was. They didn't think I looked like a wrestler. They didn't think I acted like a wrestler. Um, and at first I was kind of like, this kind of sucks uh, being this polarizing, getting this, these hate messages. And then I realized, I go, no, this is this is great. This is everything I always wanted. I always loved growing up in the nineties and hearing about the polarizing musicians or celebrities and whatnot and the tabloids and it's just like uh you know, I was right where I wanted to be when I was a teenager. So I figured, all right, let me poke the beehive. Let me let me go at it with Jim Cornette, even though he has a hundred thousand followers that are going to swarm my Twitter. If I say something negative and try to rip my heart out of my chest, it's just, I love it now. Uh, I love being this polarizing professional wrestler. It's, it's, it's probably everything I always wanted to be. So, you know, you got to take the, the positives with the negatives. And uh, that's why you see my name always pop up in these, uh, these uh these dirt sheet articles these dirty dirt sheet articles is because they now they know that my name creates this buzz so they can take one of my tweets or they can take something i say in this interview and they can turn it into a full-blown story which will create a wonderful reaction for their uh social media and their website so i love it it's perfect and uh i will continue to go at it with these these eggheads on uh, social media. I was going to say, they don't call you the bad boy for no reason whatsoever, you know? (laughs) No. Oh, did you want to add to that? No, I was going to add something, but uh, my brain kind of just halted. Like, uh, now I don't know what to say. (laughs) <laughs> no worries. Let's go ahead and keep this going because one of the things too is like, okay, we kind of mentioned the growth of GCW and just like them running so many different shows and obviously, you know, getting to work the LA shows. The, we, I've gotten to see the passionate crowd, the passionate audience from like the very beginning and now to kind of just see like how much more events are being run and I feel like constantly GCW is making all of these new announcements of like, hey, we're going to be here for the first time. Now we're going to be here uh, for 
you as somebody who's been from with GCW for like, you know, from, you know, for years now, uh, what do you think it is about GCW that has made it kind of feel uh, special, feel it unique, you know, in comparison to your AEWs and your WWEs? I think it's just uh, the possibility that anything can happen. Anyone could show up. Someone possibly could pass away in a, a wrestling ring. Uh, it's a combination of all of that. Um, it's just uh, when, when we say GCW is the last outlaws, we mean it because uh, there's no crew in professional wrestling right now, whether it's good or bad. Uh, that's the what the GCW crew represents and what we provide for the fans. Um, and it's crazy, like going to somewhere like Wyoming uh, and just drawing a crazy, crazy crowd for Wyoming standards in a barn with goats and whatnot. <laughs> uh, and then seeing them know, seeing someone from bumblefuck Wyoming, I don't even know, and walking up to Effie and saying, listen, I'm such a fan of you, and uh, I can't believe I'm meeting you right now. And uh, walking up to someone that's a established GCW guy, someone that's not like me who's had a chance to be on television, someone like an Effie or someone like an AJ Gray. These are homegrown GCW talent, and, uh, you know, these are, these are characters, you know, that people, people love. That's been that I think that's been one of the things that I have seen too, where it's like people connect with, you know, these characters, you know, whether it be Effie or whoever else. And it's like you get to see people like do what they're really good at and do what they want to do on this stage, which is really awesome. So now we kind of mentioned at the beginning, you know, some of the buzz, the recent buzz that you've been causing on the internet. So I want to go ahead and jump into that because uh you got this massive opportunity uh to team up with Sean X Pac Waltman to take on the major players on at uh, uh, GCW heartbreak and you turning on X-Pac garnered this massive reaction from the crowd. So first of all, I want to get your thoughts on what it was like for you getting to team up in this match with X-Pac, somebody that, you know, kind of took a break from wrestling and is, you know, kind of getting, uh, you know, getting back into the, into the group of things. Uh, actually me and X-Pac, before GCW was Game Changer Wrestling, it was Jersey Championship Wrestling. It was a company uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, a company that created something like uh, uh, the J Cup, which was a big independent tournament with a lot of prestige back then. Uh, Ricky O was the promoter. It disappeared. And then eventually it reemerged um, where me and Sean Waltman, were actually the tag team champions at one point with uh, Scott Hall, rest in peace, as our manager. And it was just, uh, that was wild. And then when Nick Gage came back, it kind of changed back, it changed into Game Changer Wrestling and went more a deathmatch route uh, with things. Um, but yeah, it was, it was cool for him to come back and just, uh, you know, choose me to, you know, be part of his comeback. But sometimes, you know, I I didn't want to, but I had to um, sacrifice X-Pac to the bad boy God. Um, and, uh, you know, he looks great. He's in, he's in great physical condition. But, you know, we're going to see what happens at spring break this year. Uh, and, uh I consider this up there as one of the biggest matches of my, my career. And it's just uh, crazy the way things have happened in the last few days. And, you know, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a, a very special moment in Dallas, Texas when uh, I go one-on-one -on -one with X-Pac and, uh, you know, I idolized him growing up, you know, from one, two, three kid to six to, coming back to the WWF and being X-Pac and D-Generation X, you know, he, he had such a great run and just looking up to him and seeing what he's gone through with addiction and, you know, coming back to this level and looking the way he does and, 
you know, still wrestling the way he does. You know, I needed to make this match happen. I've been asking him for years to make this match happen. And I finally found my outlet to make the match happen. So you're going to see something special at spring break six. And, uh, you know, there's a reason these guys, they, they want to, they want to come back to independent wrestling and they want to work with me because, you know, I get it. And, uh, I'm going to do my best to put on a, a memorable match with these guys. You know, I, I wrestled Marty Jannetty twice and he had goo ankles. Uh, I don't know if you know it. I no, just, what is that? His ankles are deformed. I think they're, he got surgery now, but he could barely walk. He had like two broken ankles that he never fixed or got operated on or, or whatnot. He needed plates in there or whatnot. So they just look like goo ankles. And I had to carry him like – it was like when a firefighter has to carry that bag up the the ladder that's shaped like the human body to train for uh, – at the fire academy. That's what I compared my matches to Marty Gennetti. So X-Pac is not that. X-Pac is a physical specimen for his age, and uh, I can't wait for it to happen. I don't know what's going to happen to him. I might feel bad afterwards, but, you know – that's that's uh, that's that's the Joey Janela way. When you turned on him and everybody started throwing things, what was your reaction to that? Did you expect people to react that way? Like, did you think that this action was going to result in that? It happened when when Cardona beat me in New York City. I was surprised for it to happen there, and I for a second it wasn't happening when. Uh, the deal with Xbox happened and then one flew in and then it was uh, within three seconds, the entire crowd were throwing bottles, buckets, everything that wasn't, they were just throwing it in the ring. And, uh, you know, I've waited for my entire career to get that reaction because I was being such a baby face on, on the Indies and, putting my body on the line for all the fans. There was no way that these fans could hate me. Um, we've tried it before. I, I, I said, listen, I don't want to be the nice, cute bad boy anymore. I wanted to be the bad boy. And Brett said, there's no way you can, you can be that. They, these people love you too much. So getting that reaction and then having my – fantasy of going out like it was all Japan in the early 90s and I was Dr. Death Steve Williams running through the crowd pushing fans kicking fans in the face and slapping fans around hey it was my fantasy come true and I worked my entire career for that and hey I'm not sorry if you want to if you want to get involved you want to buy the ticket take the ride as Matt Justice says take the ride and uh there's no lawsuits uh, as we speak. So, you know, I'll take it as a, as a W. So, yeah, for sure. And even like the following, uh, the following night for the coldest winter, I remember like you opening up the show, sitting there in the chair and everybody was like, fuck you, Joey. And just chanting like all of these stuff at you. And it was just like this anticipation because we were waiting to go live on fight TV and you were just sitting there and the crowd was just like going like, so like, they were so mad at you. Uh, it, I'm sure that must've been, you know, just like you mentioned, kind of like rewarding in a way, because that's kind of what you wanted. Yeah, it was the time to do it. We we pulled the trigger at the right time, and uh, you know, I want to I I want to be loved. I want my flowers, but also at the same time, you know, it's time for a new direction. It's time for a new Joey Janela, and it, and this is the perfect time in my career to do something different and go this route because uh, you know, despite my wrestling style and sometimes the way my body feels, I see myself being in the business as a wrestler for a very long time. And, you know, you need to do this thing in waves. Sometimes it's, you're at a low point in your career. Sometimes you're at the highest point of the mountain, but you know, you got to do things like this to keep the longevity, keep the buzz going. Uh, and I feel like I'm so, I, I started when I was 15 in the business. So I just feel like, 
you know, I have the mindset. I have the wrestling brain. As I said in Atlanta, my wrestling brain is too big for my skull. I think uh, I'm not good at a lot of other things. I'm not good at math. I wasn't going to be a teacher. Certainly wasn't going to be an astronaut, you know. Probably wasn't going to be a firefighter or anything like that. But professional wrestling is what I was put on this earth to do. And uh, I truly believe that. So, you know, we're going to keep the, the train the train rolling all the way to uh, my, my grave site. And so I do want to talk about uh, the show, uh, Joey Janela Spring Break. You know, there's you got two nights, two loaded nights right now. Uh, you know, I got a lot of these matches on here, but I want to give you the opportunity to kind of let the people know what we can expect from both nights of, of Joey Janela Spring Break and some of the matches, some of the people that we're going to be seeing, et cetera. Yeah, Spring Break, when it started off in, uh, I believe, 2017, it was just a, a show that was offered to us and GCW and they said how can we make it work well Joey Janela has this crazy internet buzz right now let's just say it's Joey Janela show his party and I said yeah let's do it and it basically was a meme show basically we take a hot talent and put them with someone from the past or put them in a weird situation with an invisible man and it was just started off like that as like a meme show and people were into it but now GCW has grown so big now with our own established stars and our own storylines that now we have to find a medium to make this a, a medium of a, a, of what we are known for, what Spring Break is known for, and basically the WrestleMania, the biggest show of the year, the Wrestle Kingdom of GCW. We have to find a medium, and this is – and we've found our rhythm this year. Uh, of course, me and X-Pac – we're going to have the annual spring break death match, which is our biggest death match of the year, um, in my opinion, which will be John Wayne Murdoch versus Alex Cologne. Uh, they're in a heated uh, blood feud right now. Uh, that's going to main event and close out night one because no one's going to wrestle, want to wrestle in that disgusting ring after they're done. Uh, John Moxley, the GCW champion, will be taking on a challenger, AJ Gray, who was a GCW champion for about 30 seconds uh, until he lost it. I think that was in 2018, I believe. He beat Gage and then lost it uh, right away to Ricky Shane Page, who was cashing in some kind of gimmick. I forgot what the situation was. And a lot of fans were angry about that. So we're going to give AJ his chance to be GCW champion against – Arguably the biggest star in the business right now. Um, also on night one, um, three-way tag team, just craziness. Just at that, the building is going to be probably ripped apart after this. Uh, second gear crew versus Gage and Tremont versus the Briscoes, three-way tag. Uh, I don't have to explain that. That's going to be wild. What, I don't even... And then there's a lot of matches on night one, a lot of great matches, other matches, uh, stuff we haven't announced yet. But night two, we got PCO returning uh, to basically the house that made him. Uh, spring break for the first time since his match with Walter. He's going to wrestle for fellow French-Canadian Mike Bailey, which will be a clash of styles, a first time ever, and just an all-out fuck fest. Uh, Effie is going to be wrestling Minoru Suzuki, which is just, uh, on paper, the most what-the-fuck match we could book. I know a lot of fans wanted to see Orange Cassidy versus Suzuki because that was booked before COVID kind of took that show away from us. But that wasn't happening. That wasn't in the cards. And I feel like this is even more what-the-fuck than that. And it's a grand slam for us and Game Changer Wrestling and one of our established stars. Uh, and, of course, that night will be closed out by the – clusterfuck maven will be in there jimmy wang yang we're still working on a lot of stuff it's gonna probably go three hours uh you'll either love that match or you'll fucking hate it you think it's a disgrace to the business or you'll think it's a, a charm a gift from from the heavens uh and maybe you'll see an appearance by a visible man a visible stan maybe the whole invisible family so we'll see what happens there and uh that's just some of the stuff you'll see uh and you can go look at – I posted the cards so far on my Twitter a couple of days ago. 
it's going to be wild. Uh, it's going to be complete, utter insanity. And I hope uh, the crowds love it. I think they will. Like just looking at the card on paper and then hearing you talk about it a little bit more. It's very exciting because you know PCO is so crazy. Mike Bailey is so entertaining to see the greatest clusterfuck. Now I have to ask you because I know that uh, Maven is going to be in that and he hasn't wrestled in 10 years. So I got to ask you, how on earth did you convince him or how did he get convinced to take part in this and to kind of get back in the ring? It was a weird one. Brett just goes, uh, I said, yeah, we have to start. We have to start finding guys for this clusterfuck. I was throwing some names. He goes, I got Maven. I go, what? You're just going to non- nonchalantly say it like that? I got Maven. I said, this like is how? great. That's a, gift. That, that's a gift from the man himself. I'm like, come on. I'm like, really? You got Maven? I got Maven. So, so th- good for Brett. Crazy. It's doing that deal. That, that is super crazy. Like, when I saw the name being announced, I just thought, what? This is happening? Like, how did they even convince him? So I am curious to know, like, the backstory to that. But I also, like, want to ask you, because I've, you know, you mentioned all of these names and, you know, people that you're probably, you know, trying to get. Is there anybody that you've been trying to get that you just haven't had any luck with? Or, like, somebody you would really like to see? There's so many. So many names. I'm trying that. I'm trying to pinpoint one name I want to see in the clusterfuck. I don't even – it's like the hardest question you can possibly ask. <laughs> You're like because all these so, people. There's so many guys. Alex Wright is probably number one, but that's – I would say it's either between Alex Wright or Mark Marrow. Uh, oh. that, that's, those are probably my two. Mark Marrow's doing shooting stars in the lakes and stuff, so maybe, maybe you know, maybe he's looking for a comeback. Maybe we can uh, figure something out. I know he talks to DDP a lot. I talk to DDP occasionally. Fellow Jersey man can maybe uh, hook me up with uh, some Mark Marrow contact, and uh, maybe we can make that happen next year. But I don't even know if those guys between Alex Wright and Mark Marrow, I wouldn't. Those guys to me are such big names that for a spring break show that you wouldn't even, you'd have to put them in a featured contest. So who knows? I know Alex Wright hates America, uh, (laughs) but I don't blame him. So (laughs) those chances are that you'll probably never see him here again. What is the process though? When you go up to guys that have, you know, stepped away from the business for a long time, like what's the process of saying like, Hey man, like we want you for this. And how do you get them to like agree to it? Back in the day, it was a lot harder just, like, going through people and just, like, feeling them out and, uh, you know, through connections and agents that work with them at signing, saying these guys are – GCW is blowing up. This can be a great platform to make a return. Now it's gotten to the point that they're coming to us saying, listen, I want to wrestle for GCW. This is where I want to be. You know, it's not like the 2000s anymore where, like – when, when Scotty Tuhati came, when I talked to him on the phone, when they said, listen, we want you to wrestle Scotty Tuhati because my opponent, Drew Parker, he couldn't make it to the States. I said, that sounds awesome. They said, he's going to call you right now. I said, oh, that's, that's cool. So I talked to him on the phone for about 25 minutes, and he was nervous because he did a shot for a Ring of Honor in the 2000s when he got released from uh, – WWE the first time and they boot him out of the fucking building and I just said the match is weird he said it was against Larry Sabisco or something which is just an odd ring of honor match to begin with somewhere in LA I don't know if it was a part of some kind of wrestling weekend or some convention I think but he was like is this gonna happen again like are they gonna boo me out of the out of the building I said no I said we I said, the fans are different these days. They love nostalgia. GCW kind of has a big part in, you know, bringing that nostalgia back. Uh, fans appreciating guys like Scotty Tuhati and appreciating his his uh, antics and his worm. So it's just like, no, I said, you're not going to get booed. If anything, I'm going to get booed, and it's my fucking state, and this is basically my home building, and they're going to boo the fuck out of me. I said, because you're Scotty Too Hottie and they're going to love you. And he came out to a thunderous, probably 
one of the loudest reactions I've ever seen in that carousel room. And he had the crowd wrapped around his finger that entire 22 minute match. And, uh, it was great to do it with him. And, uh, you know, I hope, I hope he can come back soon and do some stuff. I know he's been booked up. He's been traveling the world and he's just loving life again. And, uh, very happy for him because he was a, he's a wonderful, wonderful guy. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, I just love it when these guys come back and, uh, they get a reaction like that and they, they feel young. They feel, they feel like, uh, young again. One time I wrestled Scott Norton and, uh, AIW in his comeback match. And, uh, he, he, he walked in the back and screamed at the top of his lungs after the match. I feel young again. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. That means so much to me. And a lot of these veterans, I know a lot of the older heads uh, at AEW, some of the guys, I'm not going to mention by names, but I know they, they don't like me um, because – I don't know why the way I present myself or the way I'm just so nonchalant about things or the way I say stuff on the internet. But, you know, I really respect these guys. The the Ricky Mortons, he came in and worked with me. We did a singles match and we, we tore the place down on spring break in uh, COVID spring break in Indianapolis. And he he's forever grateful for me. I, I truly respect and love this business. Um, and these guys, these veterans, you know, I may come off like a, a disrespectful at times, but I truly love these guys and making, you know, them feel like they're young and uh, just working my ass off. And, uh, you know, I, I will do this. And one day when I'm older, 50 years old, I'll work with all the younger guys, you know, I will, you know, I will embrace that Tracy Smothers in the wrestling business and be the guy to, you know, work my ass off till, till it's over. And that's the thing too, is that, you know, so I think like if anything this weekend kind of reminds you that you don't always get this like second chance in wrestling. And, you know, there are a few people that get to get those second chances where they get to go out and, you know, kind of, uh, you know, refine their place in wrestling. And I think it's a really awesome thing. Like you mentioned, you know, Scott Norton and his reaction to getting that, that, you know, uh, crowd reaction and feeling young again. I mean, not everybody gets that opportunity. So to be able to give somebody that opportunity or have a platform where these people can do that, like, you know, legends in the business, I think that it is really something, uh, special and on top of that you know now GCW I think has this like track record where you know you're seeing you know guys like Jeff Jarrett Kevin Nash and you know so many other people that have made appearances in GCW where it's and you see how they're taken care of so I'm sure you know it's like kind of like yeah. a, I saw how they're taken care of so they're gonna you know take care of me too that sort of thing yeah I just now these guys they gravitate it's not only GCW they just gravitate around me now it's like all right I wrestled even the guys from overseas, the Sasuke's and, and, and Jinzei Jizaki's I, I wrestled and, and have a great track record with. And, and either, e even this weekend I'm wrestling Barry Horowitz at wrestle pro. I don't even know how that even came about. It was a weird idea from Kevin Matthews. And this guy hasn't wrestled in like, I, I don't know, maybe even 20 years. I, I don't even know what's going to happen, but I'm going to give it my all. And I'm going to be like, Hopefully afterwards I get that reaction from that that guy that he he fell in love with the business again and he, he wants to start hitting the road again. Who knows? Uh, this is like this is what I like to do. You know, this is uh, what makes me happy. You know, if I don't make if if I don't sign another contract in my career, so be it. I'm I'm, I'm completely happy with rolling around in the in, at the outlaw mud shows with some of these, these either wacky names or great, great names of the past. Love it. This is, this is everything I could have dreamed of. 
Well, since you brought it up, I do want to ask, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but there are reports out there that say that your AEW contract is up May 2022. If that's incorrect, you can let me know. But uh, with that being said, is that something that you're interested in? Is you know, Would you like to re-sign with AEW if given the opportunity? I said, I've been saying, I said in a couple interviews with Sean in September, that was all out weekend, I believe. I said, yes. Uh, as recent as the interview with Barstool Sports, I said, yes, uh, my contract's up on May 1st, and I'm going to have to say no now. I'm not interested in signing with AEW, uh, re-signing with them. Um, it was a little nerve. I, I, I was a little scared getting back into the independent wrestling world and making money. Uh, it's so – you take those things for granted. You're getting a paycheck every two weeks, a pretty good paycheck. And in your head, you're like, shit, when this is over, this is going to disappear. But I was born a hustler in this business. I, I was scared to get back into the world, but now I'm, I'm no longer scared because I, back in the day before AEW, I was um, going to wrestle for basically nothing. I was just doing it because I love it. I would do three, four shows a week and I would rack up small paydays from the promoters plus my merchandise and I'd be satisfied. I'd be making a lot of money. But now my price has gone significantly up. So I didn't know if the promoters were going to welcome me back with open arms. But recently I've realized the promoters know the situation. They realize what the situation is going to be. And they've been hitting me up big time. They say, we want you to come back here. We want you to wrestle some of the newer guys we have. We, we want you to wrestle some of the older guys. We want that Joey Janela back. And I'm happy and I'm satisfied with what I did in those three years in AEW. It was a learning experience. And I'm, I'm going to say this in the most positive way possible without looking negative. AEW, those three years, was developmental for the rest of my career. Uh, I'm so much sharper now, not only in ring, but business wise, um, I've learned so much in those three years that now not only am I sharper myself in all facets of the wrestling business, but also I can go to a young guy. I can go to a Nick Wayne and teach him some of the stuff I've learned in those three years, or I can go to GCW, or I can go to a another promotion and teach them what I've learned on the other side of uh, the, the curtain. Uh, so I'm not sad at all. I did everything I wanted to do there within the six months. I started there. I, my goal was to wrestle John Moxley, Kenny Omega, main event TV, main event pay-per-view did it all. The only thing I didn't get was an action figure, which I don't know. So, so be it. It's over now, and uh, we're just moving forward. I, I, I have no complaints. I thank Tony. Uh, I just wish there were more. They've been doing this to people. They've been radio silent on the people. They are letting the, the contracts expire. That's why you have talent relations, to talk to your talent and tell them what the situation is. If they're going to have a paycheck coming in or – they're going to be signed to a per appearance deal, which some of the guys have uh, have agreed to. I would never agree on a per appearance deal anywhere. Um, my per appearance deal is going to be when I'm booking myself all over the world. I'm booked in six different countries coming up per appearance on the independent scene. I want to be my own boss. That's how I've got my name out there. I was my own boss and I had the most buzz outside of the elite. And that's why I had this opportunity at AEW. That's why I had the opportunity at all in people. People say to me on the internet, they said, the only reason you worked at AEW was because you're friends with the young bucks. I met the young bucks twice before AEW. I wasn't friends. because I was the, one of the most successful self-promoting wrestlers and in the world at that point. So I'm not sad about anything. I thank everyone there. I learned so much. It was 
I had ups and downs. You know, COVID really killed me wrestling in front of no crowd. I really lost motivation. My back was shot out. Uh, just uh, when when my the, the doctors tell me my back is shaped like an S because all the wild stuff I've done in my career. You know, that's something that's scary to hear, and that's why you're not like moving the way you should at 31 years old. It's because your spine is shaped like an S, but that's been fixed. I feel great. I'm back in shape. I just wish it was, there was less radio silence on their end with me. I consider Tony a friend. I hung out with Tony a lot in the beginning days of AEW. I just wish they would talk to me. I, I, I know it's, you know, it, it's come to an end, but uh, I appreciate them. I appreciate the experience I had, and I'm going to take everything I learned there and bring it with me for the rest of my career. Was it one of those situations where, you know, you mentioned this radio silence, but just to kind of clarify, was it just them not telling you like, hey, we're going to resign you. We're thinking of resigning you. Was it them not really stating the options or just not bringing things up with you? Like where I just want to clarify that. Well, it was weird because we were doing this whole angle with Sunny Kiss uh, that I basically booked the whole thing top to bottom at it, at it. And it was hitting on all cylinders for a, for their internet TV show. It wasn't on TV. People were bombarding us to put it on TV because it was so good. And the emotion was there and people were into it and people started to hate me because I turned on Sunny Kiss. I said, listen, Sonny, I, you're over now to a degree, but I want to get you to the next level with this storyline. And uh, if I knew otherwise, I would have had Sonny Kiss go over in our final street fight in um, Universal Studios, which was a great received match. I would have had Sonny go, on, go over me and I would have walked into the sunset. But I think they had plans on me. Tony kept on saying, after this, we're bringing you back to TV. But unfortunately, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, a situation. I wrestled Eddie Kingston in Charlotte, and uh, I, I super kicked him in the face a little bit too hard. Uh, came in a little bit too hot. I've been squatting probably 50 more pounds than I'm used to be squatting and doing uh, 100 pounds more on the uh, leg press. And uh, I don't know. I didn't realize I had that type of power in my legs, and I gave him a super kick, and I broke his orbital well bone and uh he was going into a feud with Chris Jericho and I feel like that might have been the straw that broke the camel's back uh, a lot of guys maybe some older heads that believed my hype and believed I was some kind of dangerous professional wrestler I've had times where I've injured people of course everyone has but once you get a reputation you know it's hard to break that and uh you know, I've had a, a string of bad luck throughout my AEW career, and uh, that might have been the strawberry cam camel's back, but I don't know because they don't communicate with me. Right. Like, they did the same thing to Marco Stunt. They just stopped talking to him. Uh, but I appreciate them. And, uh, you know, I just, if you have talent relations, I, I know Christopher Daniels would love nothing much, love nothing more than tell me that, that, I'm uh, no longer with the company, but it is what it is. And uh, I'm not sad. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at anyone. I had a wonderful experience. I'm happy for fucking Penelope Ford who came up with me. Uh, basically, I took from, you know, she was my girlfriend at one point and we, we, we made this thing happen from CZW dojo wars which was in a storage unit somewhere at south jersey all the way to these bigger shows to us getting a getting a, a full-blown deal uh for three years with all the wrestling and she's doing wonderful right now and uh you know i did everything i i ever wanted there and uh to me it's uh i'm gonna make basically the same money this year doing independence but working twice as hard um this year i just uh it's, it's it's no big deal to me and i i appreciate everyone there and i appreciate uh 
everything uh, I got to do and uh, just just uh, happy right now. I'm more focused, more motivated I've ever been in my career. And uh, you can see it in my work. Uh, I've been nothing but, there's been nothing but good Joey Janela matches over the last eight months. Whether it be my matches that I did at AEW Dark or my GCW matches or my match with Nick Wayne, which is arguably the best independent wrestling match of last year. I'm back to where I wanted to be. And uh, I feel 10 years younger. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to change a thing. It was great. Great times. And I'm having a great time right now. And I see it in you too, like instantly, like when I saw you at the last GCW show in LA, I like, I could see it in your face and just like the way that you like, you carry yourself. You really seem like you're kind of like, uh, you're sort of like in this, I I feel like you're kind of like reinvented yourself in a way, like kind of like a further extension of who the bad boy was, but just are finding like, uh, you know, new, new ways to showcase who the bad boy is. Like, I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but I can see it in your work and even just the way that you carry yourself in GCW. CW, uh, et cetera. So with that being said, I think my last question for you is like, uh, we're, you know, we're just about the third month of this year. Uh, how, what is your goal? You know, you go out there and, you know, you're talking about being your own boss, which I completely agree with. Cause I think if anything, what we've learned in wrestling this like last two years is that you don't have to be signed to a major company to essentially have a full on successful career that, you know, is financially good as well. So for you, this year, maybe the next couple of years, what are some of the goals that you want to do, like, ideally? Uh, one of my goals is to really have a uh, run in Japan, which is something I wanted since I was a child. I've, re- I've done shows in Japan, but I've never had, like, a steady run there. Uh, that that will be in the works very soon. Um, I want to continue doing what I'm doing. I want to no matter what the crowd is, no matter it's a hundred people, 600 people, 3000 people, I want to give the same effort a hundred percent. Every time I want to find, I want to wrestle new talent. I want to find new talent. I'm going to bring new talent to GCW to wrestle better guys and get themselves, you know, recognized and ready for a contract somewhere, whether it be the WWE or AEW or maybe new Japan. I want to, uh, I want to wrestle, you know, three, two, three, four times a week, uh, no matter how my body feels. There's nothing more rewarding than doing an indie show and it's after your match saying, damn, I'm beat up. How am I going to wrestle tomorrow? How am I going to wrestle the next day? And then wrestling those three days and giving it your all and giving matches that people were talking about all over the place and when you get home on that monday and you lay in your bed at nine o'clock in the morning because you haven't slept for three days and you're beat up and you sleep till eight at night I, i there's nothing more rewarding than that 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 was my favorite thing like my big indie run in 2017 2018 i would be on the road three four days a week get home on a monday go right to my bed and just pass out till nighttime, wake up, order some Chinese food, and uh, then fall back asleep. That is rewarding to me. Uh, that's more rewarding than the money. Uh, that's more rewarding than anything because I know that I did my job and I did it to the best degree I could do it to. And, uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen, you know. I don't think I'll, I'll sign another career uh, – <laughs> I'll sign another contract in my career, uh, quite personally, but who knows? Strange things have happened. And, uh, you know, I could see right now on the string of matches I've had in the last eight months and the run I've had in the last eight months, I see people that turned on me when I started to get lazy in AEW and started to get more out of shape and, I see those people coming back. I see a lot of those fans coming back to me saying, man, I wasn't into you anymore, man. Uh, uh, But now you, you, you look focused, you're back in shape. You're having these great matches and Hey, I'm going to buy, 
I'm going to buy a, a t-shirt, you know? So that's, that's uh, rewarding to me for all the fans that believed in me and now stopped believing in me. And now they're coming back to uh, just witness uh, another chapter in my life. And uh, it's going to be great to see where 2022 leads me because I know nothing but positive is coming my way as long as I keep focused and I stay healthy and uh, that's all. I just, I wish everyone luck, you know, I wish uh, everyone at AEW, all my friends that, uh, that I don't get to see anymore. I wish them luck, you know, and I know they feel the same about me. They know how much I love professional wrestling and how, you know, I, I love nothing more than helping people. I put everyone in front of myself. I've always put everyone in front of myself. And uh, I will continue. And uh, I just hate politics. I hate... I, I just hate the political aspects of this business. But that's every business. And that's why I'm going to be my own boss. And uh, no one's going to tell me nothing. Because I know I'm right. And I know I'm one of the best wrestlers in the world. And I need to be me 100%. I can't have anyone tell me what to do, whether it be, I don't know. I don't want anyone to tell me how to wrestle, how to live my life, how to betray myself on social media. I don't want that. I am Joey Janela. This is how I got my name out there, and I'm going to be Joey Janela. And this is the year that I'm going to going to be the platform to prove that I'm one of the best hundred percent. I got to tell you, hearing you talk about everything that you're going to do and kind of like this new mental place where you're at, I just think it's so awesome. I want to thank you so much for doing this interview with me, for being so open and so honest. I really appreciate you for that. And I just want to say thank you, man. Like, thank you for doing this conversation with me. And I honestly wish you like the very best because I think you're going to kill it. And we're going to get to see, you. you know, you and Sean Waltman go one on one. I cannot wait for that. I am going to go ahead and post all of the links where you guys can buy yes. tickets go check out the show in the description box below but other than that joey uh if you want to go ahead and plug in anything you want to plug in before we go i just want to thank you for doing this interview with me i had a lot on my chest you know there's a lot of stuff i had pent up and i was keeping to myself and i just i just couldn't i couldn't hold it anymore and i'm sure this this interview that you're doing with me right now it's gonna get it's gonna it's gonna hit a lot of uh it's going to make a lot of, a lot of the sheets and whatnot as people like to uh, use my name to, for clickbait, but it is what it is. And it's out there now. And uh, I just want to see everyone at spring break six mania weekend. You know, you, I'm sure you'll see me at the show. I'm sure you'll see me at the bar. I'm sure you'll see me stumbling around the streets afterwards, celebrating uh, my success that weekend and my, victory over Sean Waltman. It's going to be awesome. I will be there. I will be catching the show for sure. Uh, Joey, thank you so much. Guys, please make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel. And again, all of the links in the description box below to support Joey Janela. Check out Spring Break, GCW, and more. Until next time, I'm Denise Salcedo. This is the bad boy Joey Janela, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.